guys, welcome to Switzerland and welcome to Art Basel. I am here with Michael, the head of hydrogen program here at BMW, and with the Art Basel because of this car, Michael. So, before we talk about the BMW X5 hydrogen and all of that, tell me why we're here today and what's special about this new car. So, this car is right now part of the whole installation of Art of Estevlin, which is a very great artist and very much into sustainability. And these cars do not only serve as uh, shuttle cars here, but also are part of the whole installation of S. And they are wrapped in a really great design, designed by Estevlin. Okay. So tell me, what's special about this art? I mean, the collage painting, I guess that she calls them. What's so special about this? What was the idea behind this one? And why these colors and the movement and all of that? It, it carries the idea of water and then the, the great wave of Kananagawa and some texts of Ulysses and also of uh, engineering uh, people of BMW, which integrates the whole idea of hydrogen uh, also into art and, 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 and to the synergies between hydrogen technology yeah. and artists. Okay, so now let's talk about the BMW X5 hydrogen, right? So clearly I've seen the car before. I drove the car quite a few times. It's based on the X5. Tell me about the hydrogen program at BMW and what it means for the company. Then we can talk about some of the specs. So for, for us, sustainability has always been a major role within the BMW. And, and we see hydrogen as a, a really great opportunity to bring down CO2 emissions besides battery electric technology. So we see zero emission technologies and fuel cell technologies as a second leg to walk along the way towards zero decarbonization and basically fuel cell electric vehicles are very similar to battery electric vehicles the main difference is that the energy is not stored in big batteries uh, instead it's stored in hydrogen and gaseous pressurized hydrogen within the car so give me a use case maybe, right? So a lot of people would say, of course, this car has got 504 kilometers and a WLTP, but you can get the same range on a BEF vehicle. Why would somebody pick this one over a BEF, basically? Give me one good use case. Yeah, so the main difference uh, between battery electric vehicle and fuel cell electric vehicle is that you can refuel it just like internal combustion engines. So within three to four minutes, you can refuel it from zero to 100%. So fully loaded within four minutes which is convenient like 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 an uh, internal combustion engine at the end. Okay. So it sort of combines the advantages of uh, battery electric vehicles mm -hmm. in terms of silent and uh, local locally emissions free driving with the convenience of normal combustion engines. All right, so let's talk about the specs of the car. How about we pop this up first? Maybe we see what's underneath. So here underneath the bonnet, you will find the fuel cell system itself. Okay, so now before you, we talk about that, Explain to people what's a fuel cell electric vehicle, because there's a lot of confusion. You know, is this an electric vehicle? It is not, but it actually is. So explain maybe briefly how it actually works. So the main difference between battery electric vehicles is that the drivetrain itself is fully electric. So it also uh, even shares the electric drivetrain with the iX with the it's like the motor. electric motor. OK, it's, it's the same electric motor. Sure. The main difference is how the energy is provided. OK, and the energy is provided as H2, which okay. is stored in pressurized gas underneath the car, and it is converted to electricity within the fuel cell system, which you can see here. Okay. And this basically works like the, the hydrogen flows into the system. Mm -hmm. it, the hydrogen is combined with the oxygen out of the air mm -hmm. to H2O, okay. which is water, yeah. and electricity, which then provides the currency for the propulsion of the car. So the output is always going to be water, basically. Yeah. Okay, now when we talk about power specs, I believe it's 401 PS. How much you're getting from the fuel cell stack and how much you're getting from the e-motor? So the, the stack itself provides 125 kilowatts. Okay. So this is the base performance and we're shaving peak performance with the small battery, which is in the trunk, which provides two kilowatt hours of capacity approximately and uh, serves for the rest of uh, power to achieve the 400 uh, horsepower. Yes. What's the limitation on the power? Could you do more power? Is this the right balance when it comes to this vehicle? Because of course people will say, okay, you know, their EVs, they can do maybe 600, you know, yeah. 50 or 700. Is this like a good balance or is it something that you did by design or you could improve this if you really no, want to? Uh, this is basically the right power for this vehicle, but okay. uh, as, as we wouldn't be BMW if we wouldn't uh, uh, try to get out more of the system. So okay. that's basically definitely subject, subject to our development to, okay. to push the limits and to, to, to get more power output at the end. Okay, 
So yeah. for people that don't know how uh, hydrogen works and all of that, where do you store the hydrogen in the car? So you have two tanks from what I believe? Yeah, the, the hydrogen is stored in, within two tanks. Uh, yeah. One is uh, in the transmission tunnel, okay. so aligned in this direction. The other one is underneath uh, the second seat row. Both tanks in total carry six kilograms of hydrogen, okay. which uh, serves then for 504 kilometers within the VLTP. Gotcha. And you said refueling three to four minutes, basically. Yeah. How many refueling stations are in Germany today? So Germany is quite good at the moment with 86 okay. refueling stations. Uh, also Korea and uh, Japan is very, very good at the moment. And we are fully convinced that there will be a enrichment of, uh, of hydrogen refueling stations within the next years coming from duty, heavy duty and, and, and light commercial vehicles transport. Well, hydrogen is a very appropriate solution to decarbonize. Gotcha. And this is a collaboration done with Toyota, basically, right? So, so the, the cells itself are okay. provided by Toyota. Uh, all the rest of the system is uh, designed, engineered, and produced by BMW. What about if you drive in the winter time? Because I had a chance to drive the car in Aria Plug. It was quite cold, minus 40 Celsius. Yeah. Are you losing any range when it comes to cold weather? So other than with battery electric vehicles, where you have to heat up the car mm -hmm. uh, with the energy coming out of the battery, we have here temperature coming out of the system, which we use to 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 keep the the inside of the car warm, mm -hmm. and therefore we have no loss of reach of, of in, range. in colder temperatures. Now, when it comes to driving dynamics, were there any improvements done to this car to account for maybe the extra weight and all of that? Like, does it drive like a BMW? It absolutely drives like a BMW. You you, you did already experience it. Yeah. You can experience. At least I'm it drifting again, actually with it. Yeah, yeah it's it's it, it drives absolutely like a BMW. And as I said before, it wouldn't be BMW if we would uh, do an application which is BMW typical, and it's also the most powerful fuel cell car in the world. Right gotcha. Now. All right, so let's take a look inside, Michael, and tell me more about this. First of all, are we losing any cargo space? No, the space is exactly the same like with normal X5. Okay. And underneath the carpet. You can find a small battery, which is probably really small with a capacity of rough, uh, roughly two kilowatt hours. So okay. you can imagine how, how small it is. And it provides 170 kilowatts to shave the peaks of the performance demands. But tell me, how does that work? Because it's such a small battery. Still. How come you're able to provide so much power? It's basically, it's a really power oriented cell. Okay. So the power to energy ratio is by factor 10 higher, like in, in plug-in hybrid vehicles. Okay. And this is a very dedicated uh, battery for fuel cell electric vehicles so in order to, to provide the power output, not having such big amount of energy within the car. Right. And also to, to reduce the amount of material which is engaged within the battery, since uh, fuel cell electric vehicles has also served for us as a company to be more, more resilient towards yeah. uh, consumption of, of, of crucial materials. All right, so we're inside the iX5 hydrogen. Tell me if there is anything different from the production series X5, for example. Yeah, mo most of the things here are very much similar to the uh, IX, uh, to the normal X5 production mm -hmm. model, but we integrated, besides this uh, type... Nice logo right there. Uh, we also integrated the refueling stations and the navigations to the refueling stations. So you can find here all available H2 refueling stations and you can straight navigate. There's actually quite them. a few in the area here. Yeah. So in Switzerland there are at the moment 17. Okay. And you can, the next one is here in seven kilometers. You can just start routing to this station. And we also integrated payment process within the app. So you can conveniently pay via app. So if you store your credit card information yeah. in there, you can just, just pay directly with that. Refuel. Sounds good. Perfect. And other than that, just your typical X5 really inside. Yeah. So it's, it, it, it drives like a complete series production X5. Gotcha. And in the back seat, are you losing any space because no, of it's the... All, it's all the same like X5. So no. all the same space and everything else. Yeah. Sounds good. Now let's talk about what's coming next since we're in the car. Long-term project that the BMW clearly, you know, the CEO has been talking about this for quite some time. Clearly the company's invested in offering this flexible, you know, platforms across the entire lineup. But what's next for your team? What can be improved maybe when it comes to uh, fuel cell electric vehicles? Yeah, we, we are right now uh, he heavily investigating on a serious production model by within this decade already. Mm -hmm. And uh, improvements will be for sure. But what, what we are working on right now is the density of the H2 uh, compartment. So to bring as much H2 as possible within in the car mm -hmm. and uh, to enhance for sure the performance. So we are heavily working on uh, bringing out more output of the fuel cells and, and the entire drivetrain system. 
And when it comes to what potential cars we might see, is this something that's reserved for like bigger cars? Or sometimes in the future you could have this technology in a smaller car to like more compact car? Yeah, we are not decided yet on, 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 a, on a model, uh, but basically the X5 itself is a very a, a very good model which which runs all over the world very good and and there are several other options uh, besides the X5 for sure and in general it the technology is better for bigger cars but it's not uh, I wouldn't rule out to bring it down in the portfolio gotcha. and as far as initiatives from the governments globally and especially within EU are there specific regulations or laws in place that will accelerate the adoption of fuel cell electric yeah. vehicles. Two weeks ago we got the notification of the EU uh, on the subsidies program mm -hmm. that we are applicable for cell subsidies and it, uh, the, the next challenge is to get also these subsidies which uh, should be come from Germany and Bavaria. Mm -hmm. This is the next uh, interesting step there. Yeah. So now that you've had this pilot on the road for a few months right now, I guess it's close to 100 vehicles globally. Yeah. Have you, what type of data have you gathered and what type of feedback have you gathered from maybe potential customers, VIPs that have tried a car? Yeah. We get really great feedback. So it, it is really highly appreciated that the car moves that smooth. It's, it's all like battery electric driving and we get the feedback that the advantage of fast refueling is a really great asset and it's, it's a very good technology besides the battery electric vehicles. So it's a second, it's a second technology. It's very well perceived there. Gotcha. Yeah. So now, final question for you, because uh, this is probably one of the main questions that we get when it comes to hydrogen. Is it safe? You know, hydrogen, historically, people always talk about hydrogen not being safe and all of that. And I've touched on this like in the past, but tell me what's your stance on this. And, you know, I've seen also a, a, an X5, iX5 hydrogen being tested for crash requirements and all of that. I've seen the car being completely damaged. But tell me when it comes to safety and all of that, what have you done or why is it a safe car? Yeah, as you just said, uh, we, we also did crash tests. Uh, there's a, a very strict, very severe regulation on, on hydrogen tanks. and. Uh, we do all the testing and ensure that it is absolutely safe. Okay. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Well, Michael, thanks for the information. I guess we're looking forward to seeing what's coming next. Uh, I drove the car, I drifted the car, you know, which was <laughs> quite, quite fun. But it's also quite exciting to see this new livery on the car. And it looks absolutely stunning here. It fits the whole our Basel idea. So very, very cool idea. So thanks for having me and uh, I will Thank see you, you next much. time. Thank you. Thank you.